Item number SCP-6293, Security Level 1, Containment Class Safe, Disruption Class Dark, Risk Class Notice. Special Containment Procedures Containment of SCP-6293 is to focus on the dissemination of disinformation dismissing the activity as an instinctive form of predator avoidance. Example Kate Arthur Ask a Redbird Scholar What's up with squirrels and cars? Illinois State University News Normal Illinois 21st of January 2016 Civilians reporting any SCP-6293 event involving over 20 instances of SCP-6293-1 are to be detained, questioned, and amnesticized. Description SCP-6293 is an enormous activity engaged in by rodents of the order Sunridae. Most commonly, the species Eastern Grey Squirrel, American Red Squirrel, and Eastern Chipmunk. Squirrels engaging in SCP-6293 designated instances of SCP-6293-1 will wait on the curb or shoulder of a road until a vehicle approaches. Once it is near enough, the instance will dash into the road in front of the oncoming vehicle. At this point, the instance will either continue to cross the road, or, more commonly, double back onto the tracks and dash back toward the side of the road they started from. Instances will often repeat this doubling back behavior up to five times, depending on the distance and speed of the approaching vehicle, frantically dashing back and forth as if in indecision, or occasionally even freezing in the tracks. Once the vehicle has passed, the instance will usually, more than 60% of observed events, return to the side of the world they started from. In contrast to the normally solitary nature, at least one other squirrel will often be present for performances of SCP-6293. Up to 500 have been documented to be present for some events, although this many is rare. Although this is usually not observed by non-Foundation personnel encountering the phenomena. To date, the purpose of SCP-6293 remains unclear. The anomalous nature of SCP-6293 was first discovered by junior researcher Eustace Barrow, a parasitologist working at Biological Research Site 104. Barrow, a telepathic sur-linguist, an individual capable of communicating with animals, had recently been receiving training to increase his psionic abilities. On April 10th, 2015, Bauer arrived at work significantly more distressed than usual and reported hitting a squirrel with his vehicle. While relating the story to a co-worker, several details stood out as anomalous and were subsequently brought to the attention of Dr. Warren, Bauer's supervisor, who interviewed Bauer about the incident. The following transcript has been reconstructed from junior researcher Bauer's account of the event, as well as footage from Bell's dashboard camera. At approximately 7.45, junior researcher Barrow is driving along the Parkway, part of his normal morning commute. As he approaches a wooded area, he begins to hear a voice in his head, and here it comes, folks! 4,000 pounds of hollering steel! Frank! Junior researcher Barrow noticed that the voice did not actually use the name Frank. But it did feel like it was referring to a Frank, you know what I mean? It's waiting at the starting line! Look at the confidence! Tail held high! Ears back! Excellent form! He tenses! 700 feet! 600! Junior researcher Barrow begins to look around for the source of the voice. 300! 200! He's cutting it close, folks! 100! And he's off! An eastern grey squirrel dashes in front of Barrow's vehicle. Barrow swerves into the left lane to avoid it. But at the last second, the squirrel suddenly changes directions and disappears back into the plant on the right side of the road.
A solid drawing by Frank. A tad unambitious, maybe, but we wouldn't want a repeat of what happened to Marcia last year, would we, folks? The voice continues talking, and Bowser slaps the side of his head. At this point, he notices the time and begins to accelerate. He briefly takes his eyes off the road, fumbling with a bag sitting in the passenger seat. And here we have Davy, fresh of a career low showing against Mortimer last fall. Can he use this as an opportunity to redeem himself? The voice passes, and Bell reports hearing the faint and squeaky sound of cheering. Sounds like he's still got some fans here! Bell pulls out a bottle of Cyanel, a Cyanel prescribed to lessen the side effects of psionic amplification training. Out of his bag, awkwardly unscrewing it while trying to keep the hand on the wheel. Davy is tense like a spring. The crowd is waiting and bated breath. Not a sound to be heard. Four hundred feet, and he's off like a shot. Another eastern grey squirrel dashes out from the side of the road, one hundred twenty meters in front of Bell's vehicle. Bell, preoccupied with shaking a pill out of the bottle, does not notice this. One, two, three, four. Are you seeing this, folks? Are you seeing this? My God, he's going for the extra duple switchback. Bell succeeds in shaking a pill out of the bottle and looks up as he bases it to his mouth. Holy crap! Bell simultaneously tries to swerve and break. The still open bottle flies out of his hand, scattering pills everywhere. Is he mad? He's trying another switch back, folks. This is unprecedented. This is... Oh! Bowers field go bumps slightly. That's going to leave a mark. A valiant attempt by Davy. Surely worthy of a place in the history books. Following the event, a team of parasolologists was assembled to study and document SCP-6293. Over the course of the next month, the team documented a total of 574 SCP-6293 events in an attempt to better understand the cause of the behavior and ascertain what purpose it might have. If any, Dr. Warren authorized a six-month solo expedition by junior researcher Barrow to make contact with instances of SCP-6293-1. The following is a log documenting the expedition's commencement. Date, May 15th, 2015. Location, a small wooded park, 10 kilometers north of the Biological Research Site 104. Location classified. Attending personnel, Dr. Ambrose Warren, junior researcher Eustace Barrow, and two site staff. The two staff members finish unloading various supplies from the van and give them to junior researcher Barrow. Barrow shoulders his backpack and walks over to Dr. Warren. Are you ready for this, researcher? I am, sir. You've got your food. Yes, sir. And your capping gear. Yes, sir. And your bug nets and insect repellent. I have them, sir. Now, I expect regular reports. Once a day, when possible, but no less than every third day. Is that clear? Very clear, sir. Godspeed, son. Thank you, sir. Bell salutes Dr. Warren and walks into the woods. Dr. Warren wipes moisture from his one good eye. That's a fine lad. A fine lad. Junior researcher Bell reported good progress for the first four weeks of the expedition. By June 9th, by June 9th, he had managed to establish trust with the scrolls and had been allowed to interview several instances of SCP-6293-1. However, his communications became increasingly irregular as the summer progressed, ceasing altogether following his report on July 7th. After a week of no contact, a manhunt was launched but failed to locate Barrow. Between September 21st and October 10th, police in Alberta, Canada received multiple complaints about a naked individual matching junior researcher Bell's description running in front of cars. In one report of the individual attempting to 
Billy, Acorns, in the hole they had dug by hand, in the resident's backyard. In all cases, the individual led the scene before the arrival of law enforcement. After this was brought to the attention of Foundation agents embedded in the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, a Foundation asset recovery team was dispatched to locate and capture Gina Researcher Barrow. On October 12th, a transcontinental rigs semi-truck driver named Julian Lepitate reported a pedestrian collision near Coalhurst, Alberta. Emergency services were dispatched and found Gina Researcher Barrow naked and in serious condition. Barrow was taken to the Chinook Regional Hospital where he was treated for 26 broken bones and several severe but not life-threatening internal injuries. The asset recovery team arrived within two hours and took Barrow into custody. In a post-incident interview, Levitate claimed to have been driving along a wooded stretch of road when junior researcher Barrow ran naked in front of his truck, shouting, WITNESS ME! Levitate swerved to avoid him, but at the last second, Barrow doubled back and was struck by the vehicle, flying six meters through the air and landing in the ditch. Following this interview, Levitate was thanked for his cooperation and anesthetized. Since the incident, junior researcher Barrow has given inconsistent accounts regarding his actions, alternately claiming that he was deep undercover and asserting that he is king of the squirrels, and as such should be afforded diplomatic immunity. <laughs>